Good afternoon, I'm John Williamson, Dean of the School of Health Professions. We'll begin our ceremony with the playing of our national anthem. While we'd certainly prefer to hold our graduation ceremony in person, our current COVID-19 related circumstances necessitate a virtual event. We know these past 10 months have presented all of us with numerous challenges requiring ongoing modification and adaptation. Despite this difficult situation, our students have remained resilient and persevered. We're very proud of their dedication and commitment to become outstanding clinicians. Well done. It is now my pleasure to introduce our UT Southwestern academic leadership. Dr. Daniel K. Podolsky, President of UT Southwestern Medical Center, holder of the Doris and Brian Wildenthal Distinguished Chair in Medical Science, and the Philip O'Brien Montgomery, Jr., MD, Distinguished Presidential Chair in Academic Administration. Dr. W.P. Andrew Lee, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost and Dean of the Medical School, holder of the Atticus Gill, MD, Chair in Medical Science. Dr. David Russell, Vice Provost and Dean of Research, holder of the Eugene McDermott Distinguished Chair in Molecular Genetics. Dr. Charles Ginsburg, Vice Provost and Senior Associate Dean for Education, holder of the Marilyn R. Corgan Distinguished Chair in Pediatric Research. Dr. Dwayne Teeley, Vice Provost and Senior Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs and Initiatives, holder of the Jan and Henry Bromberg Chair in Internal Medicine. Dr. Eric Peterson, Vice Provost and Senior Associate Dean for Clinical Research and Vice President for Health System Research, holder of the Adlin and Edmund M. Hoffman Distinguished Chair in Medical Science. For the School of Health Professions, Dr. Kim Hoggett Crumwitty, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Acting Chair for the Department of Healthcare Sciences, who holds the title of Distinguished Teaching Professor. Dr. Scott Smith, Associate Dean for Research and Chair of the Department of Applied Clinical Research, holder of the Jerry H. Mitchell, MD, Professorship in Clinical Research and title of Distinguished Teaching Professor. Our commencement speaker today is Marcia Snyder. I'd like to share a few highlights from a remarkable career. Marcia holds a Bachelor of Arts in Biology from UT Austin and a Master's of Business Administration from UT El Paso. She rejoined UT Southwestern in 2019 is Vice President for Health System Strategy and Business Development and Chief Strategy Officer. In this role, Ms. Schneider directs strategic planning, business development, and the healthcare delivery system transformation for the entire UT Southwestern Health System. This is a big job. At present, UT Southwestern has approximately 19,000 employees with an operating budget of $3.4 billion. Previously, she was an Assistant Vice President for Health System Planning and Performance supporting the strategic development of UT Southwestern and Texas Health Resources collaboration and the resulting Southwestern Health Resources Network. Although she works quietly behind the scenes, please know she is a key institutional leader and a true asset to the Medical Center. Please join me in welcoming Marcia Snyder. President Podolsky, Dean Williamson, members of the faculty, family and friends, and most importantly, graduating students of the School of Health Professions. 
Congratulations on your achievement. It is an honor and privilege to be invited to celebrate your hard work and dedication as you stand at the precipice of a bright and hopeful, albeit inimitable, future. As I reflect on our immediate past, as I imagine your experiences in the final year of your studies, and as I think about our future, there could not be a more unique and significant graduating class. These are extraordinary times. The COVID-19 pandemic is neither unprecedented nor unpredictable. Although we are making strides in treatments, it continues to cause unknowable suffering. This pandemic has subjected our economy and society to a set of stress tests that will continue into the distant future. We have witnessed tremendous strength, resilience, and transformation in the last nine months. What lasting effects will remain is yet to be seen, but our lives and industry will never be the same. We have seen a renewed spotlight and gratitude for first responders and frontline healthcare workers. Joblessness means people have lost health insurance, interrupting and further complicating access to care. New cultural and societal norms about physical closeness requires that we re-examine patient throughput, patient interactions, and the use and design of space. It is clear now more than ever that best-in-class technology is a necessity, not a luxury. Virtual care has gone from niche to commonplace. Remote working is a viable way of running a business. We expect permanent changes in the amount of real estate needed for healthcare delivery, which could reduce costs for hospitals and healthcare systems. We have an ending dependence on offshore medical supplies. How will we do what we are doing in a different world? The most resilient healthcare organizations will be in the best position to innovate and reimagine healthcare post pandemic. Our healthcare system must absorb the lessons of these challenges to rebuild itself in smarter and stronger forms that dramatically improve our nation's health in more effective and less costly ways. We must all learn, adapt, and grow, and thankfully, we will have you to help us. In leadership or in service, you will need important tools to help you on your journey, and I offer three to you today. First, never lose focus on what is important. Be honest and clear what is your true north. As I prepared to enter the workforce following my postgraduate training, the U.S. economy was in a recession. I had accumulated a lot of student debt, and I wondered if I was going to be able to find a job, let alone find a job that I liked. I had this thought that if I could figure out what is important to me, regardless of the job, I could liberate myself from any conventional expectations and be happy in any work. I decided to outline for myself characteristics of the ideal job. I came up with a set of attributes within the dimensions of healthcare vision, leadership, the team, organizational culture, sustainability and resources, and the potential for career development. I wanted to work for an organization that had a strong vision, that stayed focused on doing the right things, with a strategic and rational plan for pursuing objectives, and a progressive organization that made the market, not followed the market. I wanted to be led by honorable and inspiring leaders, highly intelligent critical thinkers with a deep purpose to serve others, I wanted a team committed to excellence, ever respectful, with a unique balance of humility and confidence. I wanted to work in an organization committed to team diversity, made up of people who have ideas and are eager to hear the ideas of others. And practically speaking, I wanted to work in an organization with strong and sustained performance, able to provide some stability in an unstable world. I've had many jobs since I first developed this list, which I continue to use. Professionally, I revisit this list every year on Boss's Day. I make sure that the characteristics of the job are still important to me and that my work satisfies these requirements. And then I express gratitude to my boss for my job. Personally, I have a similar exercise that I visit with my family at the start of each year. You can imagine this review has evolved considerably over the years. When I married, what we wanted for ourselves and our family worked well enough, 
But as our family grew and things became more complicated, we realized that we needed to think differently about our focus and intention. We began to speak and lead with the question, why? Asking the why behind our thoughts and actions brings us together in purpose. Being together in purpose makes developing a roadmap much easier, and focusing on what is important allows us to manage any bumps and detours in stride and adapt quickly. Asking why and understanding purpose has been the single most effective communication and strategic tool to align the hearts and minds and stay focused on what is important. This has served me well both personally and in my professional work and provides me with clarity, conviction, and a durable foundation for gratitude. Second, know where you are going and be bold. What about that road ahead? Do you ever wonder what it looks like exactly? Sometimes the step right in front of us is easy enough to see, but a couple of steps ahead and you feel like you're looking into a crystal ball. You may have heard that effective people begin with the end in mind, that they start things off with a clear idea of the destination so that the steps taken are always in the right direction. By visualizing our goal and being fully aware, we activate all our energy and all the necessary faculties to effectively achieve it. Goals are important and provide us some clarity for where we are going, but unless we are bold, we will miss the opportunity to reimagine and transform. I'm inspired by the proverb some attribute to Plato that necessity is the mother of invention. Inventiveness and ingenuity are stimulated by difficulty. President John F. Kennedy gave a speech at Rice University in 1962 about the quest to put a man on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. A moonshot goal is a difficult task, the outcome of which is expected to have great significance. The advantage to this type of thinking is that if the commitment to the declared outcome is strong, then knowing how to get there is less important. You don't have to know all the answers. The many requirements to launch a person into space, land them on the moon, and then bring them home safely again were not understood until the moonshot goal galvanized the focus and imagination of the many. With a focus on what is important and a commitment to a destination, anything is possible. Third, see the possibilities. In Zen philosophy, the beginner's mind sees many possibilities, the experts only a few. The term beginner's mind refers to an attitude of openness, of approaching life as though one is a beginner who doesn't know anything yet. To begin something for the first time means being comfortable with questions and mistakes. It means detaching from one's own presumed importance and predetermined concepts in order to perceive things in an unbiased way. This lets us see previously indiscernible information and potentials, opening new possibilities for action. Dropping our expectations and preconceived ideas about something and seeing things with an open mind and fresh eyes is something that we should all do, but especially those of us long in a field of practice. To be able to reimagine and transform healthcare delivery requires that we see the possibilities. And who better to offer this perspective than you newly entering the workforce? As you mature in your career, always practice having an open mind. Listen carefully and listen to hear rather than dismiss. The second part of seeing the possibilities is finding the courage to speak up. Trust and have confidence that what you feel, know, and see is of value, and learn to speak to it in such a way that it is listened to and acted upon. You have ideas, input, or questions, things that need to be addressed if your work, the project, or the team is going to be successful. Our patients need you. There's a reason you're at the table. Even when you don't know exactly what is going on, there's an advantage to a beginner's mind and voice for everyone in the room. Your voice is important, so dare to speak up. You are strong and resilient, 
and we applaud you for exemplifying the UT Southwestern core values of excellence, compassion, innovation, and teamwork in the most trying of times. The best is yet to come. Focus on what is important and know your why. Commit to a bold destination. See all the possibilities and know that your perspective and your voice are important. I look forward to working with you as we transform healthcare together. Congratulations on your graduation. Thank you, Marcia, for sharing your experience and wisdom with us today. We now come to the conferring of designated masters and doctoral degrees. Dr. Podolsky, with the approval of the faculty, I am pleased to present to you these candidates who have completed the prescribed courses and fulfilled the requirements of the UT Southwestern School of Health Professions for the degrees of Doctor of Physical Therapy, Master of Clinical Nutrition, Master of Clinical Rehabilitation Counseling, Master of Physician Assistant Studies, Master of Prosthetics and Orthotics, or Master of Radiation Therapy. They are therefore recommended for their proper degrees. By virtue of the authority vested by the laws of the State of Texas in the Board of Regents of the University of Texas System and delegated by the Board to me, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been recommended with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Congratulations, graduates. We will now ask the departments to present their graduates. Program presentations will include physical therapy, clinical nutrition, rehabilitation counseling, physician assistant studies, prosthetic orthotics, and radiation therapy. The Department of Physical Therapy educates students to provide patients with evidence-based examinations, diagnoses, and interventions. Their focus is to improve or restore movement, functional limitation, and disabilities of the neuromuscular, cardiopulmonary, and musculoskeletal systems. Of equal importance, graduates focus on promoting health and wellness as a means for improving the quality of life of their patients and clients. Dr. Ross Query, Chair of the Department of Physical Therapy and the holder of the Doris Porter Professorship, will present the graduates. Joey Dale Albritton, Benifer Alpawala, Erica Lynn Brady, Alyssa LePage Bragg, Christopher Wright Cannon, Mark Paul Seglio II, Ryan Joseph Ford, Jessica Mary Forster, Brady James Fournier, Ayana Faith Georges, Jeffrey Tate Hartley, Katie McKenna Holhouse, Brandon Carlstrom Howry, Cliff Hung, Petra Chiamaka Ahizi, Hannah John, Luke Kane, Alexis Lejeunesse, Ryan Patrick Lucas, Bailey Martinez, Christina Marie Martinez, Mary Shannon McFall Woodrum, Joanna Mendoza, Abigail Elaine Miller, Savannah Ray Picacci Molina, Brittany Myers, Ryan Thomas Newman, Genevieve Lily Pena, Lydia Prince, Brian Paul Smiley, 
Eli Clark Thom, Samson Tran, Jacqueline Rose Van Horn, Madison Paige Angelica Velasquez, Mary Elise Waller, Race David Yanni, Cameron Drake Zafario, Chen Zhang. Congratulations to the 2020 class of physical therapists. The Department of Clinical Nutrition offers specialized professional education for individuals preparing for a career in clinical dietetics. The program prepares well-qualified clinical dietetic practitioners to provide nutritional care, and it is one of only a few programs in Texas that is accredited with an emphasis in nutrition therapy. Dr. Jeffrey Browning, Chair of the Department of Clinical Nutrition, and holder of the Margot A. Denke Professorship in Clinical Nutrition Research will present the graduates. Agnes Blachou. Christina L. Burnett. Yvonne Elizondo. Carolyn Margaret Engel. Jenna Scarlett Erickson. Leanne Falsetto. Yoku Fujikawa, Lindsay Ann Garcia, Ronit Glantz Leff, Jerioth Muthani Karua, Tiffany Renee Georgette Matthews, Maral Messirian, Mariana Pardo Carrillo, Sadaf Ramazani, Mia Moorhead Ramdan, Samantha Claire Robin, Daniel David Schultz, Christina Faith Scott, Angela Zaharula Zagaracas, Laura Catherine Urias. Congratulations to the 2020 class of clinical nutritionists. The Department of Rehabilitation Counseling provides training of professionals who provide counseling, assessment, and vocational services for persons with physical, cognitive, and emotional mental disabilities in order to promote mental health and independent functioning. Mr. Robert Drake will present the graduates from the Clinical Rehabilitation Counseling Program. Mariah Lauren Camper. Michael Andrew Conley, Caitlin Elizabeth Crawford, Alex Lauren Crosby, Lindsay Loggins Jenkins, Grace Elaine Lozano, Lowell Aline McBride, Karen Julia Meltzer, Congratulations to the 2020 class of Rehabilitation Counselors. The Department of Physician Assistant Studies prepares graduates to conduct medical interviews, perform physical examinations, order and analyze diagnostic studies, participate in surgical procedures, and provide patient education. The program fosters a commitment to evidence-based practice, quality improvement, and patient safety. Dr. Temple Howell Stampley, Chair of the Department of Physician Assistant Studies and holder of the Eugene P. Jones Professorship in Physician Assistant Studies, will present the graduates. Anna Isabel Archila. Boone Isaac Bacon. Madison Paige Bahi, Benjamin 
Allen Barrett. Skylar Michelle Bluebird. Emery Bradford. Kelsey Nicole Burkhart. Jennifer Susan Burns. Rosadalia Cardenas. Winnie Chen. Wing K. Chu. Emily Frances Coulter. Ashley Teresa Davenport. Alexis A. Delgado. Aubrey Downey. Stephanie Araceli Fierros. Christopher M. Flores. Jacob Andrew Frost. Anne Burke Fuller. Celia Maricela Garza. John Michael Giacona. Destiny Annette Hamilton. Reagan Margaret Herber. Virginia Frances Hill. Bradley Michael Holmesa. Madison Elizabeth Horner. Jesse Dean Huffine. Zixion Jolene Zhang. Grant Stephen Kiefer. Sarah Joyce Klein. Samantha Gabriella Kuypers. Travis Andrew Kyle. Van Khan Lee. Rosalia Lopez de Alda. Tori Shea Manhart. Michelle Mason. Julia Pinnock Mitchell. Barbara J. Newsom. Grace Ann Chidinma Nawosu. Alexis Lynette Olivas. Jayla Chanel Redman. Chelsea Hope Sartor. Amber Morgan Scherer. Catherine Ashley Scott. Miranda Elizabeth Shalik. Austin Murdoch Shiel. Jenna Nicole Solomon. Gabriella Castaneda Stewart. Kelsey Sang. Catherine Alexis Turner. Nicholas R. Walker. Madeline Elizabeth Wallace. Stephanie Christian Weber. Maxwell Weiner. Aaron Blaine Woods. Emily Catherine Worthington. Congratulations to the 2020 class of physician assistants. The Prosthetic Orthotics Program provides instruction and specialized training of professionals who meet the needs of patients requiring the replacement of an absent limb or the fitting of an orthotic brace to a disabled spine or extremity. Ms. Leslie Gray, Director for the Prosthetics and Orthotics Program, will present the graduates. Bailey Ann Brown, Devin A. Finnerty, Morgan Elizabeth Jitsi, Connor Lawson Jordan, Sydney Elizabeth Candre, Kelsey Nicole Karnovic, Allison Brockman Mansky, Caroline Bell Morris, Lindsay Marie Pauline, Amy Payne, Jan Carl Petrich, Taylor Noel Roof, Karen Mazza Roth, 
Catherine Violet Smith. Congratulations to the 2020 class of prosthetics orthotics graduates. The radiation therapy program prepares well-qualified students to administer targeted doses of radiation to the patient's body in order to treat cancer or other diseases. Radiation therapists are highly skilled medical specialists educated in physics, radiation safety, anatomy, and patient care. Ms. Sandra Hayden, director of the radiation therapy program, will present the graduates. Gannon Marie Beatty. Jordan Getchell. Margaret Leigh Newton. Brianna Trentel Williams. Congratulations to the 2020 class of radiation therapists. Congratulations, graduates. We are very proud of your accomplishments and look forward to your continued success. Now that all of our graduates have received their degrees and the faculty and special guests have been recognized, we must also acknowledge the numerous clinical entities and institutions who participate in our various programs, as well as the philanthropic support of the Dallas community. All have provided resources important to the education of our students, and for that, we are very grateful. I also think it is important for us to pause and pay tribute to others whose roles have been vital in helping our graduates. So I'd like to acknowledge all the parents, grandparents, spouses, brothers, sisters, children, and other special friends who helped make it possible for these graduates to reach this important milestone. We thank you for your contributions. While this includes our formal ceremony, we will now share a video montage commemorating our graduates' time with us. Graduates, let me be one of the first to congratulate you on your achievement in this major life milestone. I remember during your first week at orientation when we greeted you and you were excited and maybe even a little anxious, definitely overwhelmed with all the information we were giving you. We told you there would be challenges and maybe even a few hurdles during your time here at UT Southwestern. We also told you that we would be here to offer support and assistance to help you rise to meet those challenges. Now when you watch the images of your time here at UT Southwestern, you can know that you rose to meet those challenges with your hard work and determination. I know if you take the same approach when you go into patient care and into interprofessional practice, then better health care and personal success will follow. Once again, graduates, a heartfelt congratulations.
Hello, class of 2020. It's me, Dr. Smith. I can't believe enough time has passed that you've reached this point. It seems like only yesterday that we were sharing physiology or statistics together, or perhaps you were humoring me by laughing at one of my bad jokes at an award ceremony. That you have reached this point in your training is a huge accomplishment, and I am so proud of each and every one of you. Sincerely, it was an honor and a pleasure to have the opportunity to spend time with you. I wish you all the best, and remember, work hard and treat all people with kindness and respect, and you will have success. Congratulations, everyone. Dr. Smith out. Congratulations, Class of 2020, for making it to this very special day of celebration. Your class is a reflection of the changing demographics of our nation. Every possible background, including race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, religion, urban, rural, veterans, and all walks of life. Regardless of where each of your journeys started, you've made it here today through the same combination of unyielding determination, sacrifice, and a whole lot of hard work. You embraced one another and communicated across differences and spent countless hours studying independently and collectively to achieve your goals. I'm excited to witness you become the next generation of health professionals devoted to treating your patients with respect, dignity, and kindness. Well done, Class of 2020.
Hello. It's a tremendous privilege to congratulate this year's graduates from the UT Southwestern School of Health Professions. Today is a momentous day, earned through your passion, determination, and hard work. Receiving your degree symbolizes your transformation from student to professional. And there has never been a more important or more urgent time for you to enter the healthcare workforce. Each of you have shown great resilience and the ability to thrive under unique difficult circumstances, and we're proud to recognize your many accomplishments. To the graduating class of 2020, I offer my heartfelt congratulations as you begin your journey on the vanguard of healthcare education, research, and patient care. Entering the workforce in the midst of a global health crisis represents an additional challenge, but I firmly believe your time at UT Southwestern has prepared you to rise to the moment. We're proud to celebrate this milestone with you, and we hope you have cherished every moment. Congratulations on this remarkable achievement. Thank you.